The year was 2014. The Seattle Seahawks and Green Bay Packers were facing off in the NFC Championship game, in which Russell Wilson, throwing his fourth interception of the game with just over five minutes remaining, seemed to seal his team's fate. But the Packers, after intercepting the pass in which the defensive back decided to just kneel down at midfield, where if you look at the end zone view, could have cribbed it all the way back to the house and put the nail in the coffin for Seattle. But he didn't. He fell down at midfield, and the Packers take over, and they go three and out, mostly due to a 15-yard clip, clipping or tripping penalty on one of their offensive linemen. They have to punt. The Seattle Seahawks quickly score, cutting it to a one-possession lead by Green Bay. But they're, they're out of time, just about, and they have to do an onside kick. And Brandon Bostic has the historic ball bouncing directly off of his chest, muffing the onside's kick. Seattle recovers. Two plays later, Marshawn Lynch is rumbling into the end zone. 36-yard touchdown puts Seattle up one, and then they have to go for two, in which they convert Russell Wilson, spinorama, throws it to a tight end. Two-point conversion is good. Seattle goes up three. Under two minutes remaining, Rodgers. Takes his team down the field, gets them in field goal range. They tie the game to go to overtime, in which they lose the coin toss, which was a death sentence before they changed those rules. And Russell Wilson, two throws for over 30 yards. One to get them uh, down past midfield. The second one, a touchdown to win the game. And this really is a microcosm of Aaron Rodgers' teammates betraying him in the Postseason, And this video has been in the drafts for a while. Uh, back when we acquired Aaron Rodgers or were talking about acquiring Aaron Rodgers, this was a talking point. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is a choke artist. You know, he, he has all four MVPs, but only one Super Bowl. He's 11 and 10 in the postseason in his career. And yeah, it's, it's a moot point, right? A year later off of an Achilles, I get that to some extent. I'm defending the resume of, of a Packer, essentially. But it, it's just... It's inaccurate to say, and if you think I'm being a Jets homer, probably since Brady and Belichick retired, the team that I root against the most is probably the Buffalo Bills for obvious reasons, if you could see the name of my channel. And a lot of Bills fans will say Josh Allen has been let down by his teammates in the postseason, and to that I would say, I agree. Josh Allen's been a dog in the postseason. I was at the Chiefs-Bills game and watched Stefan Diggs drop an easy 60-yard touchdown, watch a kicker miss a 45-yard kick. And I'm sure if I wanted to Google some of Josh Allen's stats, they'd be impressive as well. But Aaron Rodgers in the postseason career, 65% completion percentage, 45 touchdowns to 13 picks, 7.7 .7 yards per attempt. That 3.46 touchdown to interception ratio is the highest in NFL postseason history, which isn't shocking because we know that Aaron Rodgers has the highest touchdown to interception ratio in NFL regular season history. That 65% completion percentage and the 7.7 .7 yards per attempt are right near his career averages. He's the same player. He's the same player. The second highest, so Aaron Rodgers 3.46 is the TD to INT ratio. The second highest in the postseason of players with um, at least 10 starts or more is Brady at 2.2. Montana, 2.14. Peyton Manning, 1.6. Dude, Aaron Rodgers' defenses on average allowed 33.6 points per game in the postseason. Look, I don't know if the Jets' defense is going to be top five again, but they're not doing that. And he's a bad man. And if we can get 75% of the dude that accomplished what I just read to you, the Jets are going to win a lot of football games. And we'll talk about some.